Hey everyone, John here from the Deer's Embroidery Legacy, and in this Embroidery Medic installment, I'm going to edit a design that at first glance looked pretty straightforward, but it did start to get a little weird, so you're going to want to stay tuned for this. Now, if you like these videos, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. See you soon. Now this design was posted in our Facebook group and the person who posted it asked how they could get rid of the gapping within all of these really long satin stitches. Now, I will say that if I were to digitize this from scratch, I would not do it the way it's done now. But I did also promise myself that I was not going to redigitize this design, I was just going to edit it. So I'm gonna stay true to my word on that one, but I gotta be honest, it might almost be easier to redigitize than edit, but this is really one of those learning experience videos where I want you to see how a design that might be provided to you can be fixed as well. Now for this design, I had them send me the original photo, which I have here, and you can see all of the gaps that are appearing where you can see the fabric underneath showing through, and it's happening wherever stitch directions are opposing each other. So you'll have one set of stitches go down, the next one comes across, pulls it apart, and you can see the fabric show underneath. Now we're gonna fix this using some underlay techniques and inserting underlay within the design so that when that gap happens, we cause it to disappear. Now, it probably would be almost as fast to redigitize this from scratch, and as I mentioned, I would do it very, very differently than the way it was done here, but I do wanna show you how we can work with somebody else's design. Now, given that, when I did receive the EMB file, it is a native EMB file, that the uh, person provided to me. And when it came in, it didn't show it as, I guess, a type A file, which means that it's in the newest format, uh, or it was done in a different uh, level of the software. And when I saw that right away, I asked the person if it was digitized in Hatch, which is a Wilcom platform, or if it was done in their commercial brand. Now they told me that they had, I guess, sent this design out and had it uh, professionally digitized by somebody. And it was done on uh, the E2 platform. Uh, Wilcom's commercial platform is up to E4.5, so it is an older version, which really shouldn't make that much of a difference. Uh, but I did uh, see that pretty much right away when I brought up the design. And I'm probably gonna use some of the I guess hotkeys within Hatch that are very similar, identical to the commercial brand. And that's why there is such a, a close, I guess, uh, resemblance between the two and why, to be honest, I'm just as quick no matter which platform I'm using and pretty much get the exact same quality results. So right now I'm just going to get rid of the artwork so I no longer see that actual photo and I'm gonna bring up the actual design that was sent to me so I'll open it up and I'm going to bring it into the software and you're gonna notice the very first thing that it does is it shows me that this is not actually a, a grade A or B design. Now, a lot of people see that when they are working within Hatch and they say it's an EMB file, how come it's you know supposed to be EMB but it's not grade A or B? It's because it was probably digitized in an older version of the software but it is still a native file format and pretty much all the same rules will apply. And when I bring it in, you can see that when it comes into the sequence, all the objects come into the sequence list, and I do have the artwork there, which I am going to remove altogether. I'm gonna call this up to full screen, and I'm also gonna change the color so that we're not dealing with black. I'll just do that nice bright green on there. But you can see within the object list, that all of these objects are as one piece. So this is probably the um, telltale sign to me that this was done in the commercial software because they are joining closest point. I can see visually that this is in fact four different objects, but within the sequence view, it's showing up as one. And if I did go here and I grab that object and I go to my edit objects and tell it to break it apart, it will break apart that object. I'm gonna zoom in right here. Now it's in four different pieces. So I have four separate pieces, not one, but the down, or sorry, three separate pieces. But the downside is it actually has inputted uh, trims and jumps between all of these objects because you took it from a object that was joined closest point, all kind of tied together, and you broke it apart, and it's going to not know how to join and trim. 
Now Hatch does kind of join closest point automatically as you're digitizing objects that overlay. Within the commercial software, you can you know, digitize different objects. You can actually hit the, uh, you know, select them and hit the J key and it will automatically join those to closest point. You'll also have branching tools within both the commercial software and the home software. And there is a whole list of hotkeys that go hand in hand. And when I did a lot of editing in the old days, uh, I would go in there and I would use hotkeys to move around my designs and actually make changes or insert objects. And that's where things are going to go kind of old school for me because I'm going to leave these as join closest point, but I'm going to go into the objects and insert my underlay before it does the entire object. If I were to break it apart so that each object is independent, and even though it might make more sense to, I guess, do little bits of underlay at the same time, uh, it will then cause me to go in and have to edit all the starts and stops positions of every single one of these objects as they move forward so that they will join closest point. Um, and even if I do select them all and I hit the J key, which probably most of you Hatch users don't know you could even do that, but it will join them, but it still might give me some random jumps and trims within the design as well. So know this software well enough to know it's plus sizes, it's negative little things that happen uh, if you don't use it properly. So I'm gonna kind of trick the software to do what I want it to do. And that is to input some manual underlay stitches where they need to be anywhere that those stitches end up separating and you see the fabric showing underneath. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the beginning of the design. And if I do wanna to go to the beginning of the design, there is a hotkey, it's the H key on your keyboard and that will take me right to the beginning of the design. I hit the H key and you can see that it's kind of grayed out now. If I hit the end key, that was E-N-D, end key on my keyboard, it'll take me to the end of the design. So I can go to the beginning with the home and the end with the uh, end key. So if I want to go to the beginning, I'm going to hit home. And then what I can do is I can start traveling by, I guess, uh, object. And if I hit the control key and my forward arrow, it will start traveling by objects as I move through this design. And I can see that each object will actually be created as I move forward. Now I'm going to hit the home again real quick. And what I'm going to do now is I can see, and let's zoom in here real quick so you get an idea. I can see that there is a part that the design starts at, which is right where this little circle is. And wherever you see a triangle is where the design actually trims and goes to the next object or star in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my digitizing tools. I'm gonna to choose a digitize open shape. I'm going to choose a single run stitch and I'm gonna make sure that I, let's say, start right over here and I'm gonna start putting, and let's actually go to a six to one scale real quick. So that's the scale that I digitize at. If you don't know why I digitize at six to one, you need to take my digitizer's dream course because it helps you become a consistent digitizer. I'm manually putting this underlay down. And if I look at it here and I'm gonna zoom in real quick, there's my underlay that I laid down within the design. And let's change that color again. We'll just make this a nice, uh, I guess a little bit darker so that hopefully you can see it on screen a little bit more. Let's make it orange, see how that looks. But if I look there, I can see that I have that underlay that I put down. Now what I could do, and I made sure that I ended right where that next object began. So now when it comes forward, and if I hit the control and arrow key, it will go through by objects in the design, but I've made sure that I've gone in there and I have given some stability underneath. Now I am going to turn the underlay on afterwards because what I did notice in this design is that the person who did digitize it, the professional that did this, uh, did not use any underlay in the design at all. Now I'll let you make the assessment of whether that was a professional move or not, but I would venture to say that you need underlay in pretty much every aspect of embroidery. There's a, a couple of very minor exceptions where I may not use it, but you wanna have stability or a foundation to all those objects that you're creating. So I'm just gonna continue on and go forward within the objects. I can see my little double white squares there, so that's where my design is starting within the next star. 
I'm going to choose that digitize open shape and again I'm going to make sure that I start right where that ended off go to the other side I am at six to one so I'm going to come in here and put some zigzag stitches back and forth this will give me a foundation which is going to be under and I'll end right where I left off and there is my next object and now I'll just continue on to the next one which is going to be right here and I'm just going to repeat the process for all of the stars making sure that every single point that I put down is going to make sure that it starts and finishes right at the next point and then continue to the next one and I'll do all of these stars and we will get to the lettering next which if I look right here let's just go to the V key and back again full if I look here now it's starting right over here is my point so let's just zoom in I'm gonna hit the B zoom into this one right here let's hit that uh, six to one so that I can see it there is my double white squares right there gonna pick right back up with my digitizing tool and I'm gonna go right over to the other side put a couple of little foundational stitches that it's going to make sure that it's going to hold it down do that piece and then let's go forward again and continue on and do all of these pieces and it's going to go right to here and let's continue on and I'm going to put some points here again making sure that underlay is going to give me some stability and some stitches the same color as the top stitches so when it separates we are not going to see the fabric show through and I'm going to not now I move forward to the end of the S because there is only one object and there's nothing that's going to separate in that. And I'm going to go to my 6 to 1 scale right now. And when I hit to uh, 6 to 1 and I see the separations here, I have a point here and here where I know it could pull apart. So I'm going to go back to my digitize open shapes. I'm going to start right where I was there. And then I'm just going to go right back forth here and I want to put in a bunch of manual underlay zigzag stitches that are going to be right in place and that is going to allow me to have both of those sides have a foundation underneath and then I'm going to come right back to where it started hit the enter and there is my point and now I can continue on to the next object which is going to be right here and there it's going to be right there so I can see that's where it's starting and I have lots of points that are going to separate here so same thing I'm just going to go to my digitize open shape start right there and I can continue on to do all of these zigzag stitches again I'm at a six to one scale I'm just putting them in kind of randomly but I'm making sure that I am going right here putting a bunch in and then I can go down here do these and same thing I'm gonna go back so I'm zigzagging back and forth then I'm gonna come up to the top <clears throat> I can hit the backspace button if I don't like something that went down and I'm just gonna put some zigzags back and forth here back and forth here and then I'm gonna go back to where I started hit the enter I've generated those stitches now I can control forward within the design and go all the way to where the Y starts which is right there pan over a little bit go back to my digitize open shape let's make sure that I'm right here I'm gonna start right here and again just go to where I see it's going to separate putting in a bunch of manual underlay stitches Come right up here. Slow and pull. Even though this does have an opposing stitch angle, I'm still going to put some underlay stitches here. This one definitely. 
and that way I know that I won't have any issues. Hit the enter and then continue to go forward in the design till it gets to the next letter which will be right over here. I'm going to pan over and pan down. I can see that I'm right here in the design and I'll just continue and do the same thing all the way through to the end. I won't have to worry about the D because just like the S it was one single object but all the others I'm going to make sure I follow the exact same order and make sure that I put in some manual underlay stitches anywhere I see these objects oppose. And I'm going to have to put it in the top end from the now we've added in all of our manual underlay and you can see them within the sequence list they're identified as objects that are placed exactly where we want them and that's the benefit of traveling through the design and actually inputting these objects where we know they need to be as opposed to having to resequence and try to find start and stop points all that good stuff so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this up uh, full screen I'm going to select the entire design and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add underlay to everything because we don't have any underlay in this design whatsoever so I'm going to go to my underlay I'm going to add a zigzag stitch in I could probably add a zigzag or even a double zigzag everywhere within this design and then I'm going to add in a second underlay and for this underlay I'm going to add a uh, edge run underlay so it's going to actually give me uh, I guess nice stitches a break wall to make this a little bit cleaner not have them sink in as much because these are really long stitches and I'm going to change that from normal to medium which is going to inset them a little bit because these are really really wide stitches I don't want the uh, underlay the edge run underlay to be too close to the edge because they're going to go down close and a really long stitch is going to happen we're going to have tension drawing on the machine and it might actually cause some of the underlay to pop outside of the stitches instead of staying inside so I tried to edit this design as quickly as I could we did not add any extra trims or jumps within the design we did add stitches because we've added underlay and you know I guess the manual underlay but those are really a necessity to having a design so out well so I'm not going to apologize about that, but now we are going to take this to the machine. We're going to sew it out. We'll be right back because the proof is always in the stitching. Well, we finished running the design and the results are dramatic. We didn't change anything that you could visually see within the design. None of the objects were altered at all. All I did was change what was underneath. We gave it a good foundation to make sure that the stitches that you do see will no longer have all of those gaps like you saw within the first photograph of the actual design. When I ran it, I ran it on a golf shirt material and you can see that it sewed out perfectly. There's absolutely no fabric showing underneath those stitches. We had perfect results and once again the proof is in the stitching. <laughs>